On weeks like this, it just seems like the volatility never ends. Tomorrow we have NFP, which will conclude one of the craziest weeks of the year so far here in 2023. Tomorrow we have NFP, like I said, uh, and it will be another high impact news. And guys, look at this week, how much volatility we've had. Just high impact news after high impact news after high impact news. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking through setups, ideas that I'm looking for going into the NFP release, and I'll disclose a little bit of my current positions. Let's jump right in. So welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Nick and I go through the Forex market, uh, the stock market, the indices market, all that stuff here each day on my channel. And I try and give you guys thoughts, uh, ideas, you know, latest coverage, that sort of thing. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Let's talk a little bit about what I am looking at going into the week. And first, I'll show you guys where I'm at. I just picked up a long position here on the gold market. Um, I will say this already, I am early to this entry. I entered this today on my live stream at the 38.2%. Uh, my stock Stop loss did not get hit, but it's pretty close. And by the time you guys see this, I might have already been stopped out. Here is my current trade on gold. Uh, it's a very small position. I picked up GLD, which is you know the stock market ETF equivalent of gold. I can't trade CFDs as a US client, so I just trade it on Weeble. But I'm long here at gold, and uh, my stop loss is just below the lows here, below <clears throat> this, uh, this previous spike to the downside. Now, here's my thought process on gold. I'm long because if you look at the daily chart, the market has been trending very nice to the upside. Side. I would expect if the bulls are going to hold this one, that this level should end up holding. Despite some volatility here today and a big sell off, I'm jumping in front of it knowing that there's a possibility it just flies through the lows and I get stopped out. If it happens, it happens. I'll take a small loss and uh, I want to comment on my thought process with that. It's a new month and that means a new giveaway here at A1 Trading. This month we're giving away a brand new 28 inch 4K Samsung computer monitor. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is fill out the form down below. You could win this amazing brand new monitor free of charge just by filling out the form. The winner will be picked at random at the end of the month. So go fill out the form and good luck. Now. Stop loss, like I mentioned, is below this low. So if this low gets taken out today, I'll probably be stopped out of this small initial trade that I took on gold. However, my secondary entry is going to be down here at 1900. If price can dip deeper into this pullback zone and find its way to 1900 on gold, even if that means taking that uh, you know, before NFP or during the volatility of NFP, that's a level that I'm very interested in giving a shot on the long side. Now, here's a zoomed out look of the four hour chart. And what you can see is that we're in an overall uptrend. Yes, price is chopping around and shooting back and forth right now, but my goal would be, or my thesis would be, price should hold these levels. And if it doesn't, I'm going to stop out. So first idea is near current levels, right? So stopping out if necessary, if price breaks through. Second, idea would be 1900 that big psychological level should hold and if that doesn't then i will take a loss there now what i just did i just walked you through scenarios in which case i am accepting where i'm going to be wrong many traders struggle to ever become profitable because they're so stubbornly holding on to their idea of what they think is going to happen whereas profitable traders tend to very hold, hold very loosely their opinions I think gold should continue going up, so I'm going to try to buy it in these levels. If I'm wrong though, uh, then I'm going to stop out, right? I'm gonna take a small position, a small loss if I need to on this. So my thought process on this with gold uh, from a technical perspective is as, as I mentioned, looking to buy here or here, trying each level to see if I can catch a bit of a bounce. If markets move in my favor, let's just say we break back and we return to the highs going into the NFP event. What I'll be looking for is to take that stop loss that I have on my trade and trail it into profit to see how long it wants to run. I'm not trying to call a top here on gold. I'm just trying to catch a pullback. And if I don't, I'll get out. Now, with the dollar, the dollar has been all over the place. We shot to the downside, in fact, on yesterday's interest rate decision and post commentary from uh, Jerome Powell. We saw the dollar absolutely plummet underneath these previous lows. This is incredibly bearish for the dollar and part of the reason why I'm predominantly looking to be long on gold, right? Looking for this dollar to continue to decline. We saw a big rejection point come in all the way, hit the 61.8% and reject. So, so far, technical analysis would lend towards more downside 
for the dollar. We'll see if that is the correct way. And again, holding loosely to our ideas, not dying on the sword if we're incorrect about an idea. Now, going back to the edge finder, I want to show you guys something. Bullish on gold here on the watch list. If you guys aren't familiar with the A1 edge finder, it is our market scanning software tool that allows us to look at several different factors across the top of the screen here. You can see things like COT data, retail sentiment, seasonality, uh, and economic data like inflation, unemployment, etc. Now, what we're doing here <clears throat> is I'm looking at specifically the uh, strong buys, the buys, the sells, and the strong sells. And prior to the event here, we're seeing that gold continues to get a positive bullish bias, so does the NASDAQ uh, and the S&P 500. All three of these things have done pretty well despite all the volatility recently. In fact, the NASDAQ especially and the S&P, both of these have flown with these buy signals generated last week. So um, I'm looking at gold here and if I pull up the gold specific chart really quick, we could take a quick look at why, generally speaking, I am bullish on gold and looking for this volatility to offer, offer some pullback opportunities. So COT data. The gold market here in terms of institutional traders, there's a net 72.59% institutional money is long, okay? So big money, hedge funds, smart money, no speculating on what they're doing. We know from the CFTC's report that their money is generally aligned on the long side. So where do you think I wanna look for? Probably on the long side too. I'm not, you know, I don't claim to be smarter than these guys. They do all these, these deep dive researches on prices and forecasting and all sorts of stuff. I'm a retail trader. I understand that and I accept that I'm not gonna know the future perfectly. I'm a reactive trader. I look to follow trends and I don't think I'm the smartest in the room. And I think that's part of the reason why I've been able to get to the point where I'm a profitable trader is because I'm not trying to be the smartest guy. I'm trying to be practical with my trading and manage risk and all those sort of things that a lot of traders just tend to overlook. Um, the, regardless though, we also have something else here that I wanna show you. The retail traders on average are very, very short on gold. 67% of retail traders are short when it comes to XAU USD. And so we can understand that, okay, big money is long, uh, small money or dumb money, whatever you'd like to call it, amateur traders, retail traders, they're short. And so this is generating a bullish signal overall on the gold market. And that's why, like I said, I'm already long and willing to potentially try again if necessary around that 1900 mark, uh, marking that support zone. So this is my thought process on gold going into the event. And you know, there's also, of course, the S&P 500, which I am also bullish on. The problem here with this is that the trade has already gone, come and gone. You know, if you caught the pullbacks like we were able to do inside of the Discord channel, um, you know, hey, the, the trades were fantastic. Frank is still in an S&P 500 trade long. He's made some good money. And I'll show you guys just so you know, um, <laughs> here's my gold entry that I, that I highlighted. I put a little meme out there as well. But Frank, uh, he actually caught some of the S&P 500 action. And Frank is making me look bad. He is killing me inside of the Discord with this trade. He entered uh, 4,083 on the S&P 500. He's floating nearly 1,000 pips on the trade, 560 trailed into profit. So a fantastic way to uh, end the week here. If you guys aren't already inside of the Discord channel, there will be a link down below in the description if you wanna join us. Use that promo code, you'll get access for a discounted rate, or there's also a free one available in the description as well. So click those links, grab access to the free Discord, and there's also free trial available for the edge finder if that's something you're interested in. Like I said, for me, the S&P 500 looks bullish, but only if we can actually get pullbacks, right? So I'd love to get in on the long side, but I can't do it until there's an opportunity to do so, predominantly around 4,080. If price retests, then hey, I'm all for it. But at current prices, nothing that I can do up here. I'm not going to short it. Looks bullish. Not going to buy it over, you know, probably a bit overextended. So, you know, congrats to the bulls who are still in this one. I am not. Wish I was. It would be great. We'd be uh, sipping pina coladas, but you know, hey, there we go. So let's keep going. Uh, another thing I want to want to see in terms of the watch list is anything on the sell side. So pound USD is one that I want to talk about. So pound USD, if the dollar gets strong tomorrow, um, we're flirting with this idea here that looks really interesting. Here's your four hour view of the pound against the USD, which is sitting at support. You can see major levels of support being sort of violated here this morning, as you can see price breaking underneath. Uh, and we'll see how this candle closes. There's still an hour and 40 at the time of recording this before this candle closes, but we're looking at the four hour chart. If this level can break and hold underneath, I would say that the pound USD on breaks and retests looks like there could be some more continuation to the downside as we're sort of seeing this, uh, this topping effect on the pound right now. And again, 
big uptrend kind of falling apart here in the most recent price action. You can see as we zoom in a little bit on the four hour chart. So again, breaks and retests on the sell side. Uh, the edge finder has confirmation here for us on GBP USD. So, you know, of course that doesn't mean that it's a certainty, but it's lending towards a sell bias. And, you know, here's a view of the edge finders GBP USD idea. Uh, for those of you who use it, you can go take a look at this on your own time. Um, but generally speaking, we get institutional traders are long the dollar, short the pound, retail traders short the, uh, well, this is pretty mixed, but they are uh, technically a bit more short biased on this currency cross, but not, uh, not a giant majority. You've got in terms of economic data, all of it favoring the US dollar here. So GDP growth higher in the US, inflation is running out of control in uh, the UK compared to the US, which is still also out of control, but the UK has got it worse there. Unemployment numbers at 3.7%, that's worse, and interest rates are higher in the US. So overall, in terms of picking a currency cross, I'm gonna go with the dollar over the pound. Uh, despite not being necessarily super bullish on the dollar, I'd still prefer the dollar over the pound at this time. So there's a couple ideas and a couple things for you to think about as we go into tomorrow's news. Remember guys, you can get access to the Discord. You can try out the Edge Finder if you'd like to do any of the, that stuff. All of it will be linked down below in the description. Have a great rest of your trading day, and we'll see you back for tomorrow's live stream covering NFP. It looks like you made it to the end of one of my videos. Thank you so much for supporting my content. It really means the world to me. And down below in the description, I put together some of my best resources for aspiring traders who are looking to improve. I've got some free downloads that could help you, some broker recommendations. And if you'd like to join our Discord or get access to some of our trading software, all of that will be linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.